Hello and welcome to the Lacole Social Sessions. Wow, what a slur. Sorry about that. Welcome to the Lacole Social Sessions. Clearly, I'm far too excited on a Monday evening and I just want to get the information out there. We're back for a nice, gentle one and a half to two watts per kilo cruise around the sand and Sequoia's Loop in the world of Zwift. Generally speaking, the ride does break up a little bit, but no one's forced to ride hard. I do not exceed two watts per kilo, and we have quite a nice social chat. So far, there are 109 of us joined on the start line. And today, all being well, we will have a special guest from the Story Racing team. That is Chanel Mason. She joined us a few weeks ago, along with teammates Katie Toft and Sarah Story, and she's back for more. So, fingers crossed, she's made it online, and technology is playing playing nicely, helping us. Three minutes to go until we get going. I'm not in a rush to turn my legs, my legs are tired. The YouTube stream has, ju has just started, John, and you can hear me stuttering and slurring and all sorts. That's when you know I'm tired. It's like a Wednesday or a Friday morning workout all over again, except this is meant to be a social and steady one. This is the one where you should be able to hear and understand me. Let's find out how everyone's weekend was. John Burrell, if you're watching on YouTube, how was your weekend? My legs feel alright turning like that. Maybe it will be okay. Maybe all will be alright. We got hey, Chanel, Chanel is online. That's good. There we go, let's tie that one out. If you don't want to hear me talking and slurring for the next 45, 55 minutes, there is a playlist linked in the description on YouTube. I can't guarantee it will be your choice of music. However, it has been populated by people that join us on these rides and members of the Lacole team. So, something for everyone. Chanel is our guest rider tonight. We have one minute and 23 to go. I can hear in the other room that Micah's already pedaling away. Let's introduce Micah. weird that auto type doesn't come up with my wife's name Michael will be riding 1.2 to 1.5 watts per kg we have someone from Colonia JWJ and Sammy dog watching the live stream I think if I'm interpreting that correctly 27 seconds to go. Nice and easy off the line. Five seconds. Hopefully that message made it through in time. People from Edinburgh as well. And Colm. Colm? Colm. Colm? Not Colm in, in the north of England. Right, welcome everyone. This is a steady ride. Feel free to tackle the climb. We do have a climb. It's around two kilometers in length and averages around 2% gradient. It sounds a lot easier than it actually is in real life because the climb goes up in stages. It's actually a really nice little circuit. I'm not even doing one more per kilo. That's not good, is it? Oh dear. Alex has made it. Yes, Alex. It's 
So we have quite a few regulars on these rides. George is back. Find out how George's injuries are. Georgia, who was a guest a few weeks ago on this ride as a cycling podcast, the Cycling Talk podcast. She had a bit of a tumble yesterday. So let's find out how her injuries are. So many people, so many people. So many messages. Let's find out how the racing's going for Chanel. Mike and though, Mike's companion app is not working. My legs aren't working. Georgia potentially has a broken finger, which doesn't sound too nice at all, does it? But at least it's not going to keep her off Swift. Hope the finger sock helps. Let's have a little look on the map. I forgot to turn my fan on. It's no huge surprise. So a lot of Chanel's racing and riding has currently been in the Cambridgeshire, Finland. I happen to know there are quite a few of us, actually, quite a few of us. It's not one of me. A few people on these rides from that area. It seems to be quite a popular place to ride. Where I'm based, it's not flat like Cambridgeshire, so I'm quite jealous. I quite like a, a flat ride, it's nice on the legs. A bit like this right here.
So it sounds like Chanel has been doing mostly time trials. Dual carriageways. Windy ones as well, which it would be in that part of the world. Very exposed, very flat. Not dissimilar to the Netherlands. Turns out, Chanel really likes the long time trials. 50 miles. find out why she prefers the longer ones. My typing, very slow. Sorry about that, there we go. I finally got the question out. You'd like a 50 mile time trial, Alex, actually. Genuinely think that might suit you. I'm not suggesting you just rock up and do it without training for it, but I think something about you strikes me as you'd have the, the staying power for that. Mentally, physically. I'm getting quite close to that two watts per kilo. I don't mean to be. Thank you, JWJ. It's, uh, it's practice makes perfect. I'm picking up an RSI in this arm from holding the bars in a really awkward position, but it's okay. There we go. I knew someone was from that area that was on these rides. And Stephen Fisher, and I suppose Jana. Hey Graham, how are you doing? Last Friday feels like a lifetime ago. I think you like a long time trial, Alex, genuinely. Here we go, top tips. Good warm up for a short time trial. I think that's quite crucial, isn't it? You're never gonna get a peak performance out of your body unless you're warm and ready. The Shear Garden. For Raymond, Raymond's been in the garden, the beer garden. Chanel's 50 mile TT 
PB. Graham, Woody's was just amazing. The best thing ever. I mean, it was brutally hilly. 1,100 metres of climbing in around an hour and a half. Or, okay, to put it in better words, 24 kilometres and 1,109 metres of climbing. Meaning, it was like climbing up an alpine pass. I've never done anything that hilly. And off-road. But, phenomenal descents made up for it. Look at this, I'm on the wheels. I've also just realized that I don't normally use that view for group rides, there we go. And I can see the wheels that I'm sat on. Look at this, properly lined out. Who's Metal Mickey? So PB for riding 50 miles solo on a time trial bike, two hours and one minute. And the goal is to knock that one minute off to get it under the two hour bar. I've done rides recently, Stephen, where I couldn't manage the 50 kilometers an hour. Does my bike creak and squeak? I don't think it creaks and squeaks, I think it just makes the sort of noise that you'd expect from a, a flywheel. I want to know who Metal Mickey is. It'd be another in-joke that we don't get. We don't have access to that. We're five kilometers into this ride already. 8.2 if you include the running. Meaning we just have 14 left to go. This is easily one of my favorite circuits at the moment. I imagine it'd be quite a tough one. Quite a tough one to race because of the climb. It goes up in stages like I mentioned before and it'd be the sort of climb that would snap the elastic that's in the group.
answering question about my bicycle. I feel like we're about to approach the lower slopes of this climb. So the climb comes pretty much in the middle of the circuit. It's not a crazy one. It's two kilometers. It's an average of 2% and it's in stages. So the ramps are a little bit steeper, some little downhills in the middle of them, but it's more useful as a reference point in the ride. Here we go, this is the lower slopes of the climb. JWJ, I'm sure you all agree, based on your comment, there was nothing wrong with modern turbo trainers compared to the old school versions that most of us would have tried at some point in the past. When I started, we were really lucky actually, we had quite a nice one, but the oil leaked out of it at some point, and it was never quite the same again, it had no resistance. Hundred and ten cadence drills. That's really good, Graham. It does make a big difference because of the torque loading on your muscles. You're not sapping that force, that energy out of them. The, it's the big contractions in your muscles that cost that much energy. So by spinning, you'll be saving your legs for later in the race. <laughs> Reaching Alex. Alex, you don't need an e-bike. Matt Ellis, how are you doing, Matt Ellis? How was your weekend, Matt? Would you like to hear something funny, Matt? Tristan, well, not funny, just a, it's just a fact. I lost 10 minutes to Tristan yesterday in the race. That's 10 minutes of my life that I'll never be able to find again. Yeah, your heart will go up. But as you get used to it, ooh, Alex the Wheeler Dealer. It's not for him. My weekend was not boring, but it was hard. Uh, Graham, as you get used to pedaling that sort of cadence, it's not getting used to it, it's your body adapting to it. Physiological changes. No Jira spoilers. Wow, Matt. Matt Ellis is up to his one minute peak power again, which means that the day I stop riding on the road is getting closer and closer because there'll be more and more people that are faster than me. There's already lots of them. There we go. Apparently, today's Jira. <laughs> Apparently today's Giro really is worth a watch.
Your body won't get soft for sprints, don't worry about that. And you can do different types. I, yeah, you must have had an off day. I must, no, hang on a minute. That team time trial, you had two big days before I joined, so I was fresh. I think two minutes on that TT, Alex, really isn't that bad at all. <laughs> Rich is now suspended from his club rides for selling stuff. No, he wasn't really. Um, Graves' question, balancing sprints and high cadence drills. Well, the high cadence drills are specific to sprinting anyway because sprinting is all about speed. Yes, it's about power, but power is force times speed anyway. So as long as you don't neglect doing some forceful pedaling, so slowing right down in a big gear and accelerating really, really hard and then revving that gear out until your legs are going fast, that's enough sprint work anyway. 20 second sprints eight times, six to eight times, to make sure you have the quality. Oh, Alex, you're such a tease. Pay Alex for that later. Oh. Can't type. You'll, you'll know by now if you watch this often enough that I can't type and speak and ride. I'm not that gifted. Oh well, look, Chanel loves the Isle of Man road race, which I've heard is absolutely savage because of the climb. But, but I would say that because I don't think I got pill that well. See two watts per kilo. Keep on having to have a little look. The women's classics this year, higher viewing figures than the men's as well. fast Graham you go faster with the tailwind I mean that in the nicest way well, uh, so sprinting is all about aerodynamics really obviously the gradient is going to play a part but if you were to sprint uh, down that 2% gradient you'd find that you'd have a higher cadence and as you were going faster the aerodynamics became much more important so having a really nice compact position on the bike it's quite hard to show you here because the camera's higher than I am Actually, I think I can show you because look. So imagine you're looking at me from the front. You wanna have your head between your shoulders, 
nice and low, nice and compact, elbows tucked in. A nice round package, as it were. So you're not, your head's not above your shoulders like I am now. Your elbows aren't stuck out here, but it's all nice and compact. Considered. But it does take practice. Like you can't expect to do high numbers like that. What riding did you get up to the weekend, Graham? You could definitely train in that position and for that position to be sustainable for longer periods. Start by trying to do it for five minute blocks with that high cadence. So you could, so like a zone three sort of effort, you know, when you, you feel like you're late to get somewhere and you ride at a sustained increased effort. So you do five minutes on and then you recover for a few minutes and you go back into that position for another five minutes and then you could try six minutes the next week. Basically short bursted efforts on a trail, yeah. It's a bit like that, it's um, you start with shorter intervals and you just build them out, progress them slightly, there's no need to go crazy with it, you don't need to add on loads each week. Increase things by around 15 to 25 percent, I reckon, each time. So, imagine you started with four minute intervals, you could up them to five minutes next time, something like that. So, Chanel does do e racing, she's a member of the e vision race team, which is a composite team of the story racing team and some hardcore e racers. on the Tuesday night Platinum League. Let's find out a little bit more about the preparation.
So apparently there's lots of verification behind the process. Sorry, there's a large process behind the verification to become eligible for Zwift Racing. So you have to do lots of YouTube links, including regular weigh-ins. I don't know if it's real or not, I'm just going to ask, let's find out. Do you need to send in a postal store? <laughs> no, you're right with the second part of that comment, Graham. It's all about your head and your shoulders, that's what counts actually. The height of your bars is largely irrelevant because if you had your bars really low, imagine my bars are really low down there right now and I can't bend my torso any further. This isn't very aerodynamic. I'm up, I'm catching loads of wind. Whereas actually if my bars are up here, so I'm now holding the hoods, but I can bend down like that, I've closed off this hole, meaning I'm no longer creating a parachute and catching loads of wind. Stevens climbed out the Zwift in under an hour. So you have to video yourself and your record your power and I suppose that's device as well. You could be more comfortable and more aero. Yep. That is a thing. You'll notice time trial positions these days are quite a lot higher than they used to be. Riders aren't bending over and exposing their back and their shoulders to the wind like they used to. I mean, it's easy to sit here having watched other people do the research. But it's, if you look at pictures of time trial positions from 15 years ago versus eight years ago versus today, they're all subtly different. Is Michael already on the downhill? Surely not. Steve's been kicked off. Try it tomorrow. It does take a little while, and you know, the book of bags won't help that much, but if that's, what, if that's how you're used to riding your bike, it won't affect you anyway, as in that would be relatively normal. How do you get more aero on a road bike? Narrow handlebars, apparently.
Right, let's see if everyone likes a giveaway. Alex, forearms flat, elbows in, head between shoulders, and don't move, basically. That is as simple as it gets. Right, let's type out the giveaway. As we only have 3.7 kilometers to go and it is a fast downhill from here. Thank you, Steve. I suppose you mean the Nicole YouTube channel. YouTube is acting weird when I was typing the whole time. I couldn't see Alex's comments. Refreshed it and now you can see it. I, I'm not sure why that is. It does appear that a few people have had technical glitches here today. I'm not sure if that's something to do with what I have going on here. If it's a broader issue that's affecting something. Arrowhood. Arrowhood. You could cut the drops off. That would save some what? I think Chanel may have finished. We only have 2.6 kilometers remaining. This is flown by. How does it go so fast? Let's tell everyone what we're doing this week because we do not have much time left. I can't believe how fast the ride has gone. This circuit really does finish quickly, all of a sudden. I wouldn't cut your drops off, Alex, but it is an idea. I would make one observation. Your bars are quite wide. You could maybe have a one size narrow bar while they're after your bike fit today. That's not up to me to decide, really. Right. Then it's the Friday chewed up. This is the Sand and Sequoias loop, if you're wondering where we are. I did say it at the start, but I've only just realised that some people may be joining halfway through. It's 
find out if anyone is mad enough to join us on Wednesday for the double day. Oh no! Right, I've just typed all the messages into the wrong place. This week. There we go, I've sent them all just private messages to Chanel. That's embarrassing, isn't it? quiet again whilst I type out everything again. You can't beat your good rally Graham, nice and British. Two hundred meters to go. I'm crossing the line. Well, I'm not actually. It's all that matters, Graham, that your bike keeps on propelling you forward. So that's the most important thing. Some very well-known riders have performed very well on rallies, including founder of Lecoq. Yancy Barker won the British National Series riding a rally in 2014. Across the line. Only a few more minutes. It looks like Mike is literally a handful of seconds behind us tonight. And that's a bargain as well, Graham. Think where that bike can take you for that price. There's no other vehicle on earth that could do that for you. <laughs> See what you did there, Alex? It's a very clever joke. Referring to the weight of the bike in pounds. I don't think in life you'll ever spend 110 pounds to get as far as you can on that bike. I don't think that'll be possible. Right, that's it. I've crossed the line. Our sweeper is about to cross the line as well. It's a fantastic ride. It has flown by, as is often the case. Coming up on Wednesday morning, it really is a tough workout on Wednesday, so come fully fueled, ready to burn. It's, is it six or eight 30 second, 30 second intervals? You'll enjoy it, I'm sure. Then on Wednesday evening, we have a threshold booster, more of a tempo style workout. Friday morning, it's the weekend tune up. And for me, it'll be a pre-race ride as I get ready for a time trial on Saturday. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Graham, Matt Ellis, Alex. Oh, there are more. We had more commenters. They've been removed from the list though. Thank you very much for joining us. It really enjoyed it. It's a brilliant circuit. It is a little bit short, perhaps. Maybe in the future, we'll find a longer one. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you on Wednesday morning. Thank you for watching. See you next time.